Hey guys, how y'all doing? Hopefully you guys are starting your Happy New Year very soon. As for me, in my time zone, Happy New Year hasn't started yet, so yeah. Anyways, um, I'm here to give you guys my last and final recap along with this final impressions on Fate Apocrypha episode 24 and 25. Yes, I know, it's very late, etc, and I know it's late. This is due to the fact that I was on vacation, etc, very early vacation if anything, and I was unable to do unable to do my recast for 24 and 25 in the end. So if anything else, I'll try to get this started right away, so I'll start with episode 24, so let's just get this started. We have to it that after Jean, etc, was like put into a certain situation and shit all, saying that he threw away all of his hate, etc, talking to the greater grill about humanity's salvation. We have to it that, um... That Shiro eventually comes out of the greater grill and tells Jean like, um... He plans to, that Shiro himself is planning to like, um, free humanity from the physical bodies. The instinct for their survival will disappear, the f selfishness will fade away, and humanity will ascend to beings, to beings with mental bodies. So in other cases, normal people will attain immortality without discarding emotions like love. So humanity, once humanity attains that state, there will be salvation, etc. However, eventually Sig shows up right on time and ends up saying that even though there's good and evil in this world, he ends up making a speech how like um that like um people will always fight their inner darkness in the end and will continue to keep fighting, etc. And we have to it that after Jean hears this from um Sig himself, she therefore tells Amaxa Shri Shiro that she she's going to stop him. But before all that, Shiro did offer Jean to like come to his side and work with him so things could be better. Although like um Jean did say like uh, was close to accepting, she did say like your intentions are wrong after Sig made a like um made a speech that humanity still fights the inner 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 evil. And of course, like, um, Jean agrees to that and tells Amaxida Shiro that humans always been fighting against their wickedness and the sadness and their angle, anger. But you know what? Your method does not bring salvation. It instead crushes all that. Although Gills was trying to convince Jean otherwise, Jean tells him that, like, um, if nobody gets hurt, there's no conflict. You're giving up on both good and evil. And we have to it that Shiro says he's fine with that, with good and evil being given up, as long as humanity is saved. If this is not salvation, then what is it? And we have to it that after Jean has a little small talk with Gills, telling him that what you have to do and knowing what you have done is evil, but you will have to like atone for that. L the Lord will always forgive you, but those you killed will not. But you will have to find a way how to like him do that. And we have to it that... um. Jean ends up, Jean, or ruler, and is using one of her, like, a noble phantasms, etc., while asking Gills to hold up, hold up her flag to defend her. And therefore, she makes a speech by saying, day to day, pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. My heart becomes hot within me as I muse the fire burn, and, and Amaxida Shiro realizes Jean's about to use some kind of noble phantasm and tries to stop her. And here her speech continues with, Here I'll meet my end, here is where my life ends. Such is my epithermal life. With what I'm leaving behind, please protect his steps. O oh Lord, I entrust this body to you. La Pulchele. And we have to it that um, Shiro activates his noble phantasm, left arm, degenerative drive, and then something with his right arm, and then zero order convergence. And, and therefore manages to stop Jean's um, noble phantasm attack, but uh, unfortunately the the greater girl is still okay. Okay, and uh, and as for Sig, he ends up having to see Ruler die in her final moments, and therefore Sig becomes really ticked off about this and gets ready to clash against Amaxida Shiro Tokusada. And therefore Amaxida Shiro accepts this as he knows that there's no going back. Eventually, Sig manages to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe or head-to-head -head with like a mox to the shittle and this is revealed later that it's because Frankenstein her, her, 
herself transferred a part of her to Sig when she activated her Noble Phantasm one time, and Sig was in the blast radius, etc. So we had to with that, like, um, eventually, of course, like, um, Sh Shira and Sig does, like, um, fight, fought each other on equal grounds in terms of, like, um, what you may call it, um, in terms of sword combat, but eventually, like, um, manages to, like, um, Defeat him in the end with the with his blasting radius thanks to Frankenstein Berserker of uh, Berserker Black's um ability. And we have to it that it ends off there. And I'm gonna give you guys a recap on episode 25 now. We have to it that Amoxida Shiro gets shooed away from Semi Ramis, of course. We do see that that she does in she does get involved with Ryder of Black, of course, by holding him down thanks to Shiro Amoxida Shiro's um command spell. And we have to it that that um, that in this episode of twenty five, etc., that Semi Ramis has a small talk with Amoxida Shiro, and and after having some conversations about him deceiving her and dying at long last, being at peace, wanting to see salvation, etc., we have to it that Semi Ramis also disappears as well. As for Rider Black, both Rider Black and Sig are inside the are inside the Greater Grail. And we have to it that the personality of the girl ends up talking to him and explains like um what's gonna be happening. As you can see, I've been I'm like um trying to stop Sig ask one thing, is there a way to stop um humanity's immortality? We have to it that the greater girl says it's impossible, etc. And we have to it that like um that that there's no way to actually countermeasure um, Shiro's um, hu giving giving humanity immortality. Instead, we have to it that knowing that Sig is, is gonna be transforming soon and he won't be able to be human anymore, he decides to go with the wish where Astalov, where Rider of Black explains to explains it later in the episode that Sig decides to become a dragon and carry the Grail somewhere else where humanity will not be immortal. And eventually, after Astolfo or Rider of Black trying to stop him from like doing that, Sig tells him, don't worry about it, this is my wish right now. So I'm going to give you my last order. Bring joy and happiness to other people in the world and be involved in my place, okay? And we have to it that Shakespeare himself writes his final lines and stories before he disappears and fades away. And as for Astolfo, he explains to like Leticia that Sig wants to like... um carry the grail and bring it to another side of the dimension where like um humanity will never achieve immortality and apparently that place that he's trying to go to right now is called the reverse side of the world another alternate dimension where the greater grail won't be able to give immortality to humanity and we have to it that um that one of our um Players or like a masters, of course. I forgot the guy's name. Collis, I believe. I think his name's Collis, if I remember correctly. Let me see if I got that right. Yeah, apparently he has a little small talk with like um, I believe what's the guy's name? Waver Velvet, which apparently he goes by a different name. Apparently, and they after a small conversation, what's been happening here and there, and him becoming a master, he is invited to be back into the clock tower, apparently, or somewhere at like um. At the major association of the of the mage association, which Kalas is is accepted back into the ranks. As for um, Fiore, we have to it that she gives up being a mage and enters rehabilitation to be to use her legs again. And as for Waver Velvet, he ends up remembering a couple things here and there, and ends up rem having some kind of cloth that reminds him of someone like um. Just like you, dude. So I'm thinking in my mind that cloth right there that's left that he sees in the box that he puts in right there, Waver Velvet. I know who that is. Those of you guys who watch the Fate series may have an idea too. So that's all. We have to it that Leticia gets ready to go and ends up having a little have one last small conversation with Astolfo before he decides to go fulfill his wish to his master. And we have to it that um that Astolfo gives out some ending narrating lines when he's going to his destination apparently with this hippogriff is like um the holy grail war that started in here does not is not exactly about 
servants fighting each other, the Great Holy Grail War. And he continues making his speech eventually and says that it was neither a masters nor mag magicians making this story, etc. But you know, like, um, it wasn't a story about saints either, but it's about people who wanted to have their um, wishes fulfilled, etc. And but more than anything, it's more than the desires for being fulfilled. Then it ends up playing a playing off the credits with showing the swords of Shido and Sig, of course, and ends off with more credit scenes. And there's a post credit scene where John Dark, or Ruler in the end, ends up traveling, t somehow took a long time, possibly, we don't know how long it's been, to travel to the reverse side of the world and meet Sig in his black dragon form. But eventually, like, um... He ends up like he ends up turning back into a home and coolest form or human form thanks to Jean reaching out her hand and he touching it and calls him a dragon that took away the immortality from other people. And we have to it that like um after what just happened here and there, we have to it that Jean tells him to Jean tells him to wake up as he won't be alone again. And we have to it that Sig and Jean is about to start their new journey together as they're about to go somewhere. We don't really know where, but one thing we're sure it's not going to be, um, it's going to be some kind of crazy journey for them. And we have to it that whatever it is, it's, they're going to do it together. And of course, John therefore tells Sig one thing by saying, I love you, Sig, and ends off there. So yeah, my long journey, and I'm pretty sure everyone's journey with like a fate apocrypha finally ends here. And you know, it has been a crazy journey, although like, um, Compared to the other Fate series I watched, honestly, with my own heart, um, I guess it's okay in a certain sense. I, because like um, I guess it's because of the change of style, and I think it's the change of the story or style that is what's different different from the other Fate series I watched. Like for example, Fate Stay Night, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, and uh, Fate Zero. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Those of you guys who are Fate watchers and been been a big fan of the Fate series would know what I'm talking about here. I mean like um it started off with the war but eventually it goes into different parts where one guy who has been a, who has been around the world who's been a servant that's been around for like 60 years wants to give salvation to humanity and he and that's what his goal was throughout this entire Fate series. Pretty much obtain the greater grail and materialize all the human humanity souls etc. And, of course, when it comes to, like, salvation for humanity that Amox of the Shiro was trying to do, it did not work out, apparently. Maybe because, like, um, it was just terrible as Sig and Rula sees it. And, in the end, like, um, of course, he is stopped in the end and dies in peace, unable to see the salvation of humanity. But his salvation of humanity does not come true thanks to Sig's efforts as transforming into a dragon and taking that greater grail to another alternate dimension where humanity won't be immortal and will have a chance to continue their growth despite the fact they will still be mortal and have conflict etc but still have the potential to change and grow and in the end towards the end of the series um Jean and Sig are reunited about to start the new journey together but before that Jean tells Sig that she loves him etc yeah so yeah, despite like um certain things here and there, I did have my pro I did have some issues and problems about maybe about this series possibly. Maybe it's just Sig himself kind of taking me off in a certain way. Maybe because like um he wants to save people people and help someone out, you know. But you know, if I had to be honest with you, I think he's the main character that gained a lot of develop development in his time when he was just a home and coolest and got into a role where he is now and starting now he's gonna start a new journey again which we don't really know what Jean and Sig's gonna end up at honestly but yeah um I was just like um ha how am I supposed to say it I guess you could say I had my moments with this at with the series of course um I don't really know like um if I say it's good or anything, I say I guess it's okay. Maybe like um, it's nothing great, etc. Because I think it's just very different from all the Fate series that I've watched in my freaking like um life. I mean like um, let me take it with like Fate Stay Night. As I say, Fate Stay Night, Fate Stay Night, Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works, Fate Zero, and Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel. You know, which apparently I have 
yet to see if there will be a second part of the movie, and hopefully I will watch it. But, like I said, um, the series is okay. I had my issues and problems, and maybe my raging annoyance with the main character and with what's been going on in the story, story etc. But, I guess, like I said, it's okay. I mean, like, um... I guess it's a alright fate series, not really one of the series I would recommend, but if you just want to watch it just to see like what's capable capable of, go ahead. I mean like um like I said, the series is okay in the end, um, but not as great compared to Fate Zero, Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works, and part one movie of Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel. So yeah. Um so what's my score out of this series? It will be a six out of ten for me. I mean like um like I said, it's okay, average at most, but it were had its entertainment in the end. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed the series of Fate Apocrypha to the best of your ability. Those of you guys had a fun ride. I hope you had re great enjoyment enjoyment out of it. As for me, I had an okay ride, but it had its entertainment and moments for me in the series. So until then, people, I will see you guys in my next video. So I'm Officer People. Have a good day. And I hope you guys will have a good Happy New Year, whatever time you've been watching this in 2018. Alright? Peace out. Bye-bye. Choo-choo-doo!